All right, then let us try to solve this question. Question number two, it reads as follows. It says, a block of ice slides down a frictionless ramp at an angle uh, 50 degrees while a worker pulls on the block via a rope with a force F that has a magnitude of 50 newtons and is directed up the ramp. As the block slides through a distance D, which is 0.5 meters along the ramp, uh, its kinetic increases by 80 joules. Okay. So now determine the net force uh, on the ice block, determine the mass of the block, how much greater will its kinetic energy have been uh, if the rope had no uh, had no been attached. Now in this case, in order for us to solve question number A, here they want us to determine the net force on the ice block. So we are asked or tasked to determine the net force on the ice block what will be the magnitude of the net force uh, acting on the ice block now here we are told that a block of ice slides down a frictionless ramp so now there is a worker who was busy there trying to apply a force on this uh, block of ice up the ramp but suddenly it turned out that this ice it got um, to slide down the ramp uh, by a displacement of 0 0.5 meters so in that case this block will slide down the ramp as this block slide down the ramp it will slide down the ramp attaining a kinetic energy of 80 joules in that case net force acting on this object will cause a kinetic energy of this object to change or to increase by what by 80 joules that means if you want net force acting on this object we're not going to use some of the forces acting on the object rather we're gonna use uh, energy done by the net force on this object so energy done by the net force on this object it will correspond with this chair uh, with this change kind of uh, change in kinetic energy which is 80 joules in this case our change in kinetic energy it will correspond with work done by the net force okay so now how do we calculate work done by the net force the formula that we use we're gonna say work done by the net force is equal to net force which is what we are looking for multiply by the displacement multiply by cos theta whereby theta it is an angle between the displacement and the net force now in this case for a fact that this object will slide down the slope that means net force is directed downwards and therefore the displacement it is also directed downwards that means the angle between the net force and the displacement in this case is going to be zero degrees so that means uh we're gonna say work done by the net force it corresponds with kinetic energy and we were already told that the kinetic energy will be 80 joules that means i'm going to substitute 80 joules here 80 joules is equal to net force which is what i am basically looking for multiply by change in x which is the displacement where <coughs> the block has traveled uh when the moment it, it, it slided down the slope so the displacement is 0 0.50 meters so that means we have 0 0.50 meters uh cause uh, theta in this case is going to be zero degrees and therefore now in order for us to determine net force we're gonna uh our net force is going to be the subject of the formula uh, cause zero it's most definitely positive one so that means you're going to say 80 joules divide by 0 0.5 zero meters and therefore what will be the magnitude of the net force acting on an object you go to your calculator you just say 80 divide by 0 0.50 in this case we get 160 neutrons down the slope that will be the magnitude of the net force acting on an object okay so now number b it says um <coughs> determine the mass of the of the block so now we need to determine the mass of the block as the mass of the block was not given initially so in this case to determine the mass of the block the formula that we are going to use since well we have determined the net force is this formula sum of the net forces acting on an object sum of all the forces acting on an object will be equals to how many objects are acting in this case like i said we have force applied we also have what we also have force by gravitational force which is in parallel so we're gonna do we're gonna have force applied on a block 
uh, on an eye, on an ice block block of ice plus a gravitational force in this case but our gravitational force will use its component which is a um, parallel component of the gravitational force now, there are two components we have parallel component we have a perpendicular component of the gravitational force now in this case what is the net force acting on the block in this case we figured that it will be 116 newtons to the direction of the displacement is equals to now what is force applied acting on an object the force applied acting on an object is 50 newtons remember it is 50 newtons but take note that force applied acting on an object it is moving up the ramp so meaning we're going to substitute negative 50 over there plus now fg parallel in this case remember fg parallel is given by mass multiply by gravitational acceleration multiply by sine theta okay so now what am i going to do i'm going to transpose 50 on the other side of the equation i'm going to say uh 160 plus 150 is going to be equals to how much it's going to be 210 uh is equals to mass which is what i'm looking for gravitational acceleration which is 9.8 times sine theta it is an angle of inclination in this case which is 50 degrees so that means here i'm gonna have 50 degrees therefore what will be the magnitude of the mass i'm going to say 210 210 divide by what 210 divided by 9.8 multiply by sine 50 and therefore let's see how much do we get we get 27.97 kilograms and therefore that will be the magnitude of the mass of an ice of a, of, a, of a block of ice okay that's how we do uh question number b therefore let us do question number c <clears throat> so number c it reads as follows it says to us how much greater would its kinetic energy have been if the rope had no been attached so that means we want to understand if the rope was not attached how much greater would the kinetic energy of this object have been if this rope was not there so to calculate this in a simpler way which is number c we are most definitely going to calculate what we are going to calculate work done by the force applied okay because that's what we want to eliminate we want to see if there was no this force applied the what the um, the kinetic energy would have increased by what factor or by how much so in this case we are going to calculate work done by force applied which is given by force applied multiplied by change in x multiplied by cos theta now what is the magnitude of force applied remember it is given or provided to be 50 newtons so that means here we're going to have 50 newtons and the displacement it will be most definitely this one and uh, uh, it will be <coughs> 0, 0,05 meters so sorry about that so it will be um <coughs> 0, uh, 0, 0 meters multiplied by cos now what is theta theta i said to you is an angle between force applied and the displacement so in this case force applied and the displacement they both act and they act parallel but because they act in opposite direction we say they act anti-parallel so that means when the forces when the force and the displacement acts anti-parallel the angle between them is 180 degrees so in this case it's going to be 180 degrees and therefore when we punch this on our calculator how much do we get so we're going to say 50 multiplied by 0 0.50 multiplied by cos 180 which is negative 25 so we get negative 25 joules so that means if force applied how much greater would its kinetic energy have been if the rope had no been attached but because the rope is attached the kinetic energy acting on an object is 25 joules plus 80 joules that we have just talked about so when we add 80 and 25 joules you will get the what you will get the total kinetic energy acting on an object but if there was no net force i mean sorry not net force if there was no force applied which is 50 newtons in this case that means the kinetic energy would have increased by 25 joules okay so come on in that case that means kinetic energy kinetic energy will have been greater 
by 25 joules or if you don't the other pro the, another approach to do uh, number c you will just have to calculate uh work done by what work done by by net force and therefore you're gonna get a greater energy and therefore you substitute 80 joules 80 joules that you get um i mean the difference that you get there therefore that will be uh work done by this force applied okay so that's how you can do it